Just deliver. Catch Transforming Bible Radio Show every Tuesday with Dr. V at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Positive Power with Stubborn Factors to Media and Spreaker Power. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is Dr. V, better known as Dr. Virginia Singleton, coming to you live all the way from Florence, South Carolina, senior pastor of the Divine Church of Deliverance, where we serve, and also our assistant is Pastor Chuck Singleton, who is also the producer for Transforming Lives Bible Radio. Also, we want to welcome all of you back to the Transforming Life Bible Radio Show on this evening. We also want to say hello to Jerry Ross all the way in Maryland. We want to say thank you tonight, Jerry, for once again letting the Lord use you to provide this platform for Transforming Lives Bible Radio. You all know how we do it. Before we go any further, we have to always give honor to the one who makes it possible for us to come before you every Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let us pray just for a moment. Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus, we just want to tell you thank you. We thank you again for life, health, and strength. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to once again break as a vessel Lord, that you can pour in and through to your people, that you can speak a word by the Holy Spirit, that we all might be transformed by this word. Again tonight, Father God, use this on the service, for we know nothing, O God, unless you give it unto us. Bless all who choose to be on this line on tonight, Father. Bless us. This is our 76th episode Father, that you have blessed us to be a voice to the nation. And we thank you now. Bless us again by your blood and by your word. And we thank you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And your people say amen, amen, and amen. And again, we say thank you for joining us on the Transforming Lives Bible Radio Show. Yes, if you will, hit those share buttons and invite others to come in and join with us tonight that they too will be blessed by this word. Tonight, if you will, we are going to be studying from the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 4, the book of Acts chapter 4, And we're going to be reading into our hearing verses 1 through 12. 1 through 12. And it reads, And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now even hide. And we look at verse 4. How be it many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Anna, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, 
by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is a stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. And verse 12, which shall be our focus verse tonight, it reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none of the name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Our topic tonight that we will be discussing is a life-changing name. A life-changing name. Amen, amen, amen. First of all, tonight, in this particular chapter, we will find out that just because the apostles Peter and John were preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and the particular and specific message that they were preaching and teaching was about the resurrection. And just because they were preaching and teaching the gospel truth, the unadulterated word of Jesus Christ, now they were being brought before the council, Lord have mercy, so that they could be questioned about their authority on what they were preaching and that what they were teaching. It is just something people can talk about lies and they can spread gossip and they can tell untruth and they can spread like wildflower. And nobody seems to care. But it's just something when the people of God begin to teach the truth and, and when the truth begin to get out and begin to spread and people begin to catch hold to the truth and start turning away from the gossip and the lies that went out before the truth, then people kind of get afraid and get intimidated about it and they try to shut down the truth because nowadays it seems as though people would rather follow a lie than grab hold unto the truth. So this is what Apostles Peter and John had to deal with when it came to the religious leader. It wasn't the unsaved people. It was the religious leaders. So they were suffering persecution because they were doing what they were charged by Jesus to do. And let me know, let us know tonight, saints, those of us who have been charged by the word of God and the power and authority of Jesus Christ, we are also going to be persecuted, hallelujah, by this life-changing name, hallelujah, when we choose to stand up for what is right. And when we look at verse 1, it says, And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. You see, the Sadducees and the priest, the captain of the temple, they were the ones that were charged with being the police uh, to keep the order in the temple. And they were known for being harsh to those that were under their command. They were the most implacable of the enemies of Jesus Christ from the very beginning. You see, the Sadducees, they did not believe in the resurrection. So their entire system of religion and the way that they believed, glory be to God, was in danger by the preaching and teaching of the apostles 
whose main theme was the resurrection. You know, so what the apostle John and Peter was teaching, it was really deflating, hallelujah, deflating the, the preaching and teaching of the Sadducees, what they were teaching, the man-made doctrine. So it went totally against what they were teaching. Hallelujah. And as the people began to turn away from what the Sadducees were teaching because they heard something different that they had never heard before, something that was life-changing for them that began to turn their lives around for the better, Lord have mercy. Now they began to upset and turn the lives upside down of the Sadducee. How many on the line know that when you stand up for what is right and you teach the pure, unadulterated gospel word of the Lord and you got a following, hallelujah, and those over there that's teaching man-made doctrine and they're teaching that which is not true, and people start following you, and there's a pull away from certain churches, and they begin to follow the church, and where there is truth being told, then other pastors will get upset, hallelujah, with other pastors, and, and, and say that you see them, they never, you can't steal members from nobody, because first of all, people don't belong to nobody but the Lord, so it's a favorite of the Lord that will draw people when they hear the truth, especially when they are seeking that which is true. The word of the Lord, he said, my sheep hear my voice, and another they will not follow. So when the people are seeking truth, they will hear truth. God will open their ears so they can know the truth when they hear it, and the truth they will follow. Why? Because they will hear the voice of this life-changing name when he speaks. And they will turn away from that which is false, and they will follow that which is true. And as we journey on to verse 2, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. You see, therefore, because these priests, Sadducees, and the captain of the Sadducees, now they were annoyed now. They were beginning to get agitated and, and they were aggravated because of the message that Apostle Peter and John were teaching the people and because they were proclaiming that in this life-changing name, Jesus Christ, that there is resurrection power even for the dead. They became so fed up with their success, glory be to God, in preaching about this life-changing name and about this message, they were determined to get rid of them and to stop out this message. Although the Sadducees rejected future Bodily resurrection, look at this. They tolerated the Pharisees' belief in it. See, the Sadducees didn't believe it, but the Pharisees did. So they had to tolerate. It is something when we have to tolerate people just because they don't believe the truth. Glory be to God. But it doesn't matter. They can believe whatever they want to believe. We are there for those who believe the word. But sometimes we have to tolerate those who don't believe the word. Glory be to God. That's why the word says, let the weak and the tear grow together. And the Lord says, when I come, I will do the separating. He did not tell us to separate nobody. He said, I know who believe me, and I know who will reject me. But let them all grow together. And when I shall come at the second coming, he said, I will separate the wheat from the tares. Now we know that the wheat are those that believe the word of the Lord, and we know that the tares are the ones who care nothing about the gospel message concerning this life 
changing name, which is Jesus the Christ. Glory be to God. So now they were determined more than ever to get rid of John and Peter. Evidence suggested that the majority of Judeans and Galileans at this time believed in the resurrection. So the Sadducees, they had to also tolerate them. Glory be to God. Jesus' witnesses, however, advocated in his life-changing name, not some theoretical hope for the future, but the belief that the first place of the promised resurrection had already occurred when Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Somebody need to clap your hands because even when he rose from the dead then, he also provided evidence that even for us this day, those of us who die in Christ, one day we will also rise in him and we will rise just as he did also. When we look at verse 3, and they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now even time. See, Peter and John had been preaching all afternoon until these religious leaders got so provoked with them, they decided to have them arrested and put them in jail overnight. Oh, they're going to hold them overnight and decide what they were going to do with them and decide what they were going to charge them with. Hallelujah. Now, when we look at verse 4, it says, How be it many of them which heard the word. So this is not this verse. Many of them heard the word they believed. And the number of the men was about 5,000. Now it said men. In this instance, it does not mean men and women. It means just men. Because we know in the biblical time, in many cases, they did not recognize the women, and the women were not counted in the numbers. In this particular number, it was only referencing the number of men that heard the word and those that believed it, the word. At this particular time, it was 5,000. But up until this point in time, it was about 8,000 men who had already heard and believed the teaching of Peter and John concerning this resurrection. They had converted when you heard about this life-changing name, this gospel teaching at this time, when they arrested John and Peter. How many, hallelujah, at that time know that because it was 8,000 up until this point that had already heard the word and believed it, how many know that why these boys were locked up in jail? know that the revival was still going on. 8,000 men was out there still preaching and teaching the gospel, but they were all ready to talk. So when people are already taught the gospel, and when they receive the word into their heart, and they know about this life-changing name, they have a life-changing experience, they are transformed by the word. How many know, no care how many preachers get locked up, how many know that the word continues to be taught? How many know that the word continues to be preached? Don't matter because the pastors get locked up. The word is still going forth. Revivals are still going on. Hallelujah, Jesus. They only locked up two apostles, but 8,000 men, hallelujah, were still out there preaching and teaching the word. See, we're talking about a life changing 
name. Hallelujah, Jesus the Christ. In Acts 2 and 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So you see, here in verse 4, it says, 5,000 more believe the word. So when we look at the pretext, when we go all the way back up to chapter 2 and verse 41, where they say 3,000 souls were saved at that time and received the word. So that's where the 8,000 up until this point were made up of men that now out there still preaching and teaching while they got Peter and John locked up in jail. Somebody needed to say hallelujah. And even now we relate that with what's going on now, even during this pandemic, just because these buildings are closed down and, and just because a lot of pastors, they have not set up other means by which they are reaching the people and services are still going on. But thank God for the leaders who made accommodations to continue the services, no matter that the building closed up, but the church can never be closed down because as long as the people of God are still alive and breathing, the word of God is still going to be preached. The word of God is still going to be taught because you cannot shut down God's church. It can close down church buildings, but they'll never be able to close down the church. So there again, when we relate that to what was going on then with Peter and John, just because they locked up the apostles, they could not stop the word of God from being preached and from being taught. Somebody needed to say hallelujah if your minister, if your pastor was able to be governed by the Holy Spirit, if your church building was closed down, but you still have other ways and accommodations was made for you to still be able to hear the word of the Lord. All because of this life-changing name and his gospel story, the word was still coming forth. When we look at verse 5, and it came to pass on the morrow that their ruler and elder and their scribes. See, the next day, the rulers, the elders, and the scribes, now they are assembled in Jerusalem. See, this group is called the Sanhedrin, Jerusalem's municipal senate. These were the ones that came together and, and, and they discussed the rules and, and the laws of the land where they would bring the people in and they served at the court to bring the people in to pass judgment down on them according to what they say the laws were broken. So they were the ones who would pass the judgment on them and charge them as they saw fit. Without even consulting the Lord, glory be unto God, because they abuse their power. Hallelujah. So whatever they decided as the Sanhedrin, hallelujah, Jesus, which were about 70 men, glory be to God, that made up the Sanhedrin, they were the ones that decided what judgment was passed down on whoever, whatever prisoners were brought before them. Let us hasten known to verse 6. And these were some of the ones that were on the council. And Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. How many out there know, don't care how many sit on a council, how many know, no matter what their titles and their positions they hold on the council or in the Senate, when you know that this life-changing man, when the Lord is on your side and when you go in faith, how many know that he is the one that serves as your lawyer, he serves as your advocator, 
He also serves as your judge, and you can stand in faith, and you don't have to stand in no fear, and he will always bring you out all right. You see, some of the aristocrats named, they we already named them, they were of our priests, so they were high priests. Now, this John that was named here, he was believed to be Johanna ben Lashe. He was a famous rabbi. And this Alexander, he was one of the richest Jews in his time. You know, so sometimes they were probably allowed to serve on this council because of who they were, because of the riches that they had. Glory be unto God. And don't we have that happening now? It's the people with the dollars. It's the ones with the money who they call the big shots. Sometimes they put them in high key position, glory be to God, because they can, they can pay the big dollars, hallelujah, not because they are the most qualified, but because they can pay the most money. And other priests were gathered together to make up the Sanhedrin Council. Again, they were usually about 70 members. Nothing really life changing in their name, for they all were known for abusing their power and their authority. Hallelujah. So they really weren't there to serve the people. They were there to serve themselves. Their power and authority was self-serving. So whatever suited them, that's how they handled the people. Glory be to the Father. So however, whatever they had to do, so that the people can look up to them, hallelujah, and whatever benefited them, so they can look at one another and say, look at how we work this out among ourselves. And we call the shots because we their big shots. We don't like this, so this is what we're going to charge them with. This is how we are going to handle them. And many times the law that they were trying to make everybody else keep, they will break the law because they will use the law depending upon who it was that was brought before them, and they would change the law for the, depending upon who it was that was brought before them. And verse 7, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, look at this, y'all. Talking about this life changing name. They had the nerve to ask Peter and John, by what power or by what name have you done this? See, there was a lame man that had been in their presence while they was out preaching and while they was teaching that God worked the miracle through these boys and this impotent man, this man was able to walk. Glory be to God. God have also given us today who are his apostles, who are his priests, who are his prophets, his teachers, his preachers, his pastors, his evangelists. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? He has also given the power and authority unto us, and not only us, but to those of us who are the children of God. It's not the power is not only given to the hands of the leaders, but anyone who can stand in faith, glory be to God, and believe that God Go work a miracle through them. Hallelujah. God will use whoever he leads to bring about a miracle, but especially through his leaders whom he has given the power and authority into our hands to do so. You see, when they brought Peter and John in as prisoners of the gospel before them, they were questioned. By what power, by what name have you done this? Hallelujah. By what power means, by what authority. You see, the council, they were convinced that Peter and John had wrought a miracle, but they were thinking that it was not a spiritual miracle that they had wrought, that God didn't have nothing to do with the miracle that they had wrought. But they felt that they had wrought the miracle by means 
was uncertain, and they thought that it was the work of demons and familiar spirits. And they know they said that it was by demons and unfamiliar spirits. It was unlawful, and they hoped that it was the case so that they could examine them and prove them guilty and could put them to death. And see, that was according to the law. When we look back to support that under the law, when we look at Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 27, see, that's what the these religious leaders, these Jewish leaders, that's what they did. They always just looked to the law because they didn't care nothing about the gospel message of the grace message that Peter and John was teaching. They wanted to stick with the Mosaic laws. Glory be to God. These, these laws that Jesus came and abolished all these laws. They didn't care nothing about the law that Jesus brought on the grace and truth. They wanted to keep the people under the bondage and the yoke of the Mosaic law so that they could control the people. When you look at Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 27, and this is what it says, a man also or a woman that have a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, and their blood shall be upon them. Many of them are found to be using witchcraft. Hallelujah. That's what they wanted to charge them with, the crime as a wizard, and put them to death for preaching and teaching about a life-changing name, which also brings about healing, glory, hallelujah. They want to say that Paul and John was wizards, or they were using witchcraft, and that is how this lame man was able to get a healing in his leg, and it had nothing to do with a Holy Ghost experience. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. See, see, they knew nothing about, and they did not recognize the gospel message where the glory of the Lord, where Jesus told his disciples that these signs will follow them whom he had given the power and authority to, that they would be able to work miracles, signs, and wonders. And these religious leaders knew nothing about miracles, signs, and wonders, unless they were the ones that used wizardry and witchcraft. My God, but here Peter and John, they relied on the Holy Spirit, the power of Almighty God, that dunamis power that God had invested into them, that he poured into them, that power that Jesus had released into their hands, that same power that he had when he was in the earth and when he left, when he ascended back to the Father, that power that he left for them to continue what he started in this earth, he released that same power unto them in his name, in his name, which gave them the authority, his name, his name, y'all do y'all hear me, people of God, his name gave them power and authority to work miracles, signs, and wonders. And his name worked it then, and his name works now, that we can still do miracles, signs, and wonders in his name. Oh, but they were confused. They wanted to say that they were wizards or they were using witchcraft. And that is why this man was able to be healed. So they want to know about what authority, about what power, about what name. This man got this healing. How y'all doing the thing that you're doing? You know, they're questioning Jesus the same way. Hallelujah. You want to know what, by what power, by what name, and by what authority? That Jesus did the work that he did with Jesus was alive and walked among them. And now here his disciples are facing the same thing that Jesus had to face. And guess what? Even today, the miracle signs don't want to show up. The people now, 
They're being questioned the same way. Glory be to God. So nothing has changed. When you look at verse 8, oh, my God. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. I'm going to do nine always. I'm going to do nine with that. If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, then Peter, with his bold, did not sin. He defended the power of this life-changing name, which was the name of Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says here that Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm. So Peter knew he had that working for him right there. Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he was free from man fear. See, the first time Peter was brought and found himself in the hall of Caiaphas was when they brought Jesus. Hallelujah. And they had arrested Jesus, and, and they brought Jesus to Caiaphas to accuse Jesus so they could execute Jesus. Hallelujah. So the first time he found himself in the hall of Caiaphas, he was afraid. That was when he denied Jesus to a servant girl. But this time, oh glory, this time, the prophecy of Jesus, the life-changing name, was now being fulfilled about being brought before rulers for his name's sake. See, the first time he was in the halls of Caiaphas, he went in fear and he denied the name of Jesus. But this time, in the hall of Caiaphas, he is defending the name of Jesus. Why? Because the first time he was there, he did not have the Holy Ghost. But this time, Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost, so he stood in power and in the authority of Jesus' name. My God, my God, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you stand with all power in heaven. Glory be to God. And the authority of Jesus' name, that's that life-changing Name, oh, my God, will give you everything that you need, that you will have no fear of anything, and you will stand in the face of all those who think that they can provoke fear in your life. And Jesus had already told them that you will be brought before leaders. You will be brought before kings. You will be brought before those, my God, and before governors for my name's sake as a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Matthew 10, 18 and 20 proves it, my God, that Jesus had already prophesied to the apostles that they would have to look for that and give yourself up likewise. Hallelujah. Just like they brought me before Caiaphas and brought me before the high priest accusing me, and I had this, but even though I did defend myself, he said, you too will be brought before the high priest. Hallelujah. And you will have to defend my name. Glory be unto God. Matthew 10, 18 through 20, Jesus told his disciples, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thoughts how or what you shall speak, but it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. But it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. So as the Lord had done, he had already prepared them. It's coming. Don't, don't act like you don't remember what I told you. Don't be afraid. Stand in boldness. Stand in my name. And you look them square in the eye when they start questioning you what did you the power and authority in, in what name you doing these things. He said, don't even worry about it. You just open your mouth. And you and because the Lord himself is going to speak for you. You don't even have to think of anything to respond to them with. Oh, my God. Talking about a life-changing name, Jesus will put the power of the words to speak in your 
mouth. He said, if you'll just open up your mouth, he'll speak for you. If some of you are facing some challenges on this line, the Lord said, fear not. You just go and you stand up and you face those giants. He said, because they ain't enough of people just like you. He said, you go and you face them giants. It's that fear that makes you make a giant out of them. He said, they ain't nothing but a human being just like you. But he said, you go and you face them and you open your mouth and I will speak for you and I'll tell them what they need to hear. And they'll armor down to you. They'll armor down to you. Glory be to God. But the reason why they speak to you the way they do, because you try to think of what you need to say to them. They're not going to hear what you say. But if you open up your mouth and let me do the talking, they will humble themselves down because they'll hear my voice and not yours. Verse 9, hallelujah, Jesus. If, okay, and then he said, Peter responded, if we are being questioned because of a good deed done for someone who was lame, couldn't walk, and you want to know how this man was healed, it was almost a rebuke to the Sanhedrin by Peter because of unconcern and hatred for Jesus, as well as abuse of their own power. Peter knew how they felt about Jesus. So Peter was like, what? Get up out of here. You can come up at us like that? Talk about by what power and by what name we do the thing that we do? We know how y'all felt about Jesus. Glory be to God. All we did was let the power of God fall on this man. And we did what God said the Lord. We opened up our mouth, and he spoke the word of power. And this man, the Holy Ghost fell on this man, and this man was healed. And now this man can walk, and y'all are sick. Glory be to God. He said, all we know is it's a good thing. It's a good thing the man can walk now. And now he has a life-changing experience because of this life-changing name called Jesus. And then he went on in verse 10. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said, be it known unto you. Oh, he was preaching now. He said, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel and by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified whom God raised from the dead, even by him, doth this man stand here before you, oh. He just said, it wasn't us. We didn't heal the man. But because we believe in the life-changing name, because we believe in the power of this name, because we believe in the authority of this name, that is why this man stands before you, oh, today. Listen at Peter just saying this life-changing name of Jesus. He said, be it known to you. He said, have no doubt about it. John and I, we did not do this thing. We stood in faith. The man that y'all crucified, hallelujah. But because y'all killed him, he didn't stay in the grave. His daddy raised him up. God raised him from the dead. Hallelujah, Jesus. So as by his name, his life-changing name, that this lame man standing before you today, healed. He's healed not in Peter's name. He's healed not in John's name. But he was healed in a, this life-changing name. And the life-changing name is the name that y'all thought y'all killed. His name is Jesus the Christ. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Peter was standing unapologetically that we do not hesitate to declare to you that it was by the name or by the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that this name was here, and not by any form of witchcraft or not by any form of wizardry, but by the power of the Holy Ghost of this mighty name and life-changing man, Jesus Christ. Let us hate the known Verse 11, this is a stone. He still repeated him. He said, this is a stone which was set at naught of you building, which has become the head of the corner. This is Jesus Christ, this life-changing name. 
This is a stone that was rejected by you, the builders. But now his father has given him all power and all authority to be the head of the corner, meaning he has allowed him now. He is the foundation upon which the true church of God is erected. He is the one who provides complete stability to his people. Psalms 118, 22, and 23 says, The stone which the builder refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous up in our eyes. Y'all rejected him, but your rejection caused him to be exalted as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Verse 12, he said, now, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none of the name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. This is, this is how Peter talked to him. He said, whereby we must, he included all of us, we, not just me and Peter, but all of us, whereby we must be saved. So therefore, our authority is by a life-changing name. Neither is there salvation in any other name. Again, there is none other name under heaven given among men, not unto the Sanhedrin, Y'all can't save nobody. Y'all can't heal nobody. Whereby we must be saved. I'm talking about a name that is God with us. That name is Emmanuel. I'm talking about a name that is all-knowing. That name is omniscient. I'm talking about a name. That is that that can heal. That name is Rafa, a name that provides. I'm talking about Jairus. I'm talking about a life changing name that covers. That name is Nisi. I'm talking about a life changing name that shepherds its people. That name is Roha. I'm talking about a name that is all sufficient. He don't need no help from nobody else. That name is El Shaddai. I'm talking about a name that is peace in the midst of a storm. That name is Shalom. I'm talking about that name, that life-changing name that is our righteousness. That name is just canoe. I'm talking about a name that is everywhere at the same time. That name is omnipresent. I'm talking about a name that is all powerful, don't need no help from nobody else. That name is omnipotent, not impotent, but omnipotent. Glory be to God. And he is stronger than all 70 of y'all men that sit on this Sanhedrin. Matthew 1 and 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he, he shall save his people from their sins. You see, Jesus, I'm going to give you a little bit of history here. Jesus God is God's son, earthly name. Y'all hear this? Y'all probably don't know this, but you may, you may know it. But I'm going to give you some history tonight. Jesus is God's son's earthly name. As God, he was not called Jesus or Christ. Oh, my God. Jesus is the Greek form 
of the Hebrew name. See, Jesus was a Hebrew. Jesus, a Jew, a Hebrew, the same. Jesus is the Greek form of the Hebrew name, Yehushua. Rendered Joshua. And it is found 215 times in the word of God. And it means Savior, for God is salvation. And God is our salvation. And because he is our salvation, it is a life-changing name. I don't know who on this line who may need a life-changing experience tonight. But I don't care if you call him Jesus. I don't care if you call him Lord. I don't care if you call him Dr. Jesus. I don't care if you call him Yehoshua. I don't care if you call him Joshua. I don't care if you call him Savior. I don't care if you call him Mr. Jesus. It don't matter who you call him. Just so you call him tonight. He knows what his name is. Glory, if you can just call him Yahweh. It does not even matter tonight. Even if you just call him Mr. Life Changer. I need my life changed tonight. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick of being who I am. I want to be better tomorrow than I was today. I want to live a better life for you. I'm ready to transform into who you created me to be. And he said, if you're ready to be transformed, there's a life-changing name. And my name is Jesus. All you need to do is call me by my name. And if you call me, I declare unto you, I will answer. So if anybody need to be changed, anybody need to be transformed on this line tonight, there's a plenty of churches, there's a plenty of pastors. You can call Dr. B. You can take Dr. B. You can take Minister Jerry Ross. There's too many pastors. You can contact your pastor, anybody. Contact somebody and let them know I am ready to be transformed because the word of the Lord I have heard tonight, and now I believe, and I am ready to be changed. Oh, we thank God for this word tonight, and we also thank God for those of you who are listening on the line, and we pray that somebody's heart has been lifted, and most of all, we pray that somebody's life will be transformed by this word. We want to thank Jerry Walsh Live Worldwide, Positive Power 21.org, following Transforming Lives Bible Radio. You will hear from Paula Breon with the testimony. Following Paula, you will hear Pearls with Veronica. And following Pearls with Veronica, you will hear from Paula G on the Paula G Show, the incomparable Paula G. No one else like that woman of God. We want to thank you, and we want to wish you all a merry, merry, merry Christmas. We pray that you all be safe. We want you to enjoy your family, but we want you to be healthy. We want you to be safe. Follow the, follow the guidelines. Be safe, most of all. And we want you to get many presents, but most of all, don't forget to get into the presence of the Lord. This is Dr. V. We love you, but God loves you most. Celebrate Jesus as you celebrate your family. God bless you. Good night. Transforming Live Bible Radio Show with Dr. V of Florence, South Carolina, and the Divine Church of Deliverance. Catch Transforming Bible Radio Show every Tuesday with Dr. V at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Positive Power with Stubborn Fat Christian Media and Spreaker Podcast.
Can you feel the power?